Drink it up. <laughs> you know, isn't that, wasn't that video great? Oh. Oh, some of you didn't see socks and sandals, baby. All the way. I've entitled this message, Life, Legacy, and Fashion Sense. I love you guys so much. And I love being a dad. Kath thought the hat might be going too far. And she's right. Magnificent, isn't it? In case you didn't read, it's not a dad bod, it's a father figure. I actually have another t-shirt that I was going to wear today, but couldn't come in on time, and it has, it has a silhouette of a rhinoceros, and it says, save the chubby unicorns. <laughs> So we'll save that for another day. Probably during a conference or whatever when we're trying to impress people. I have two other quick announcements that I need to make. I was, really the plan was to do the announcements and then run out and change, but I just, I've done that in, a pa in the past where I've changed into something else to, to make my point and, I, and I've rushed. And as a result, uh, came out with stuff on backwards and made it worse. So, uh, but there's two other quick announcements I need to make before I dive in. Uh, some of you are wondering if I've scoured the internet for any dad jokes, and you can rejoice. I have. Uh, and so there'll be a couple of those. But just a couple of quick, uh, other quick announcements. First of all, um, uh, we're, we're just so grateful, but uh, Robin uh, Dorsch has stepped down as our uh, church administrator as of July 1st. Can we just give her a, a hand and honor her? And a great job. And so we'll have a role opening up at the church. And if you're interested, you can send a resume to Josh, uh, Pastor Josh, Josh at Gateway Family. Uh, and if, like I said, if you're interested, uh, please feel free to send us a resume. And uh, we'll be working on filling that position over the next little while. Secondly, um, I've, I've emailed a few folks uh, and, and uh, reaching out uh, this morning for a few more to, to uh, help me with a task force. Um, we, as you, you know, can see with our kids' ministry, our growth, we're, we're needing to build onto our building in the next few years. And I'd like to gather a group of, of people together. I uh, would really appreciate some of our business folks to join, construction folks to join. Uh, I want to come up with a way to leverage our land um, so that we can build and build debt free. So um, I'd like to, you know, strike a task force with a uh, short term vision of coming back with a few pathways towards that so that we can move forward in that. So if you're interested in perhaps helping that, we have five on the force already. If you're interested in being a part of that, um, uh, please come and talk to me or email me at Landon at Gateway Family uh, or speak to me after the service and we can begin to do that. It'll, it'll have a shelf life. Everybody's looking at me. I, these are serious announcements. Try not to laugh. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it'll say on my tombstone, he had guts. Okay. Um, so just a couple of other quick real things that did you know that before crowbars were invented, crows had to drink at home? <laughs> I'm sorry, and I apologize, mean the same thing, except at a funeral. <laughs> hey guys, come on, I worked hard for this. You can laugh a little bit. <laughs> this one is so stupid. You know that we're in trouble. How do cats like their steaks? How do cats like their steaks? Rare. <laughs> 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 
It would be appropriate perhaps to mention that there will be ministry team available after the service. <laughs> Kath said I shouldn't say this one. What do you call a laxative mixed with a painkiller? I'd be pooping. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Todd, Todd, do you know the difference between wallpaper and toilet paper? What's that? No. Gross. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Doesn't it just feel good, friends, hey? This is, this is what we do. We lighten the mood for you. I, wanna, I, I just want to take a little bit of time today and, and encourage our fathers, um, bless our fathers. Um, I love you so very much. And, you know, a couple of things just that I was... I was Reminiscing, I mean, this is the second year without my dad, and, and you know, it's just painful. You, you, you think back, try to think about things that make you laugh, and, and, but you know, when you're a kid, there's really nothing that your dad can, can do wrong, you know? Now, there's something about that that needs to be shared, is that it, you can, they can wound you by doing something wrong. It's not about making mistakes, it's like, there's one thing to make a mistake, as a dad when your kid is a kid, but when doing something wrong can wound them. And maybe you're here today and, and you know, in that tender stage of your life, um, your dad did something wrong and wounded you. There's two things you need to, to know. The first is, is that actually you didn't grow out of it. The way that it hurt you then is real. Just because maybe you, you can rationalize or figure it out. Like, let me give you an example. You know, maybe if you were a little kid and, 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 and you know, you, your dad passed away or whatever, um, you could feel like he abandoned you. And then perhaps as you get older, you know, you kind of, you're kind of like, I just saw what that looks like. <laughs> you, you kind of... I love you guys so much. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe you felt like he abandoned you. And then when you get older, you can sort of rationalize out of that. Well, no, he died. He didn't abandon me. But the kid still feels that. And so it's, and so it's real. But there is, when you're a kid, I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, your dad can't do anything really wrong. Then you become a teen, <laughs> And there's nothing your dad can do right. Uh, because, and that's frankly because you know everything. <laughs> if you're a teenage, teenager here this morning, I don't want you to feel offended or, or hurt because you're just so cute when you're stupid. But the bottom line <laughs> is that granted, your dad can do nothing right because, again, you know everything. And then you become a young adult and there's nothing that your dad doesn't seem to know something about. <laughs> and somehow he got a little smarter. And quickly, and it's a good thing. <laughs> because now I'm realizing that I don't know everything. And then you become an adult, and there's frankly nothing that you don't want your dad's thoughts on. And then you become an older adult, and there's nothing more you want than to just talk to him again. You know, time and age give you perspective that you don't have when that it can only be gained with time and age. And as a father over this house this morning, man, I, I want to talk to you. I celebrate masculinity. I celebrate the fun. I love you. I don't want for one second for any of you to feel like as the father over this house that I would be 
disappointed or frustrated. I, th- there's no way. But I want to coach you today just on a few things. I love men in church. I love our men in church, our fathers. You know, uh, we're, I, I don't want to say a rarity, but I'll say it this way. It's healthy when you see how many men are engaged in so many things over this house. It's stunning, and I'm very, very proud of you. So, boys, I want to talk to you a little bit. I don't, this isn't a rebuke, but it's to help guide us in walking forward. Because I do want to talk about life, legacy, and some fashion sense. I've, I've debated talking about this, but I think I'm going to share it. Because socially, and, and you guys know that I generally don't use the pulpit as a place to speak politically, and this, I'm not doing that right now, but socially, one of the challenges that we're facing uh, in the day, if I took the hat off, would that help? Uh, <laughs> no, of course it doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, just for fun. Um, but one of the, thi- one of the things that, 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 that's happened today is is there's a term out there called toxic masculinity rooted um um it's 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 a response it's response has become uh or it's a response to misogyny the hatred of women um which is often made parallel to another term which is patristic society or, you know, the, the patriarchy. Um, I, I want to submit something to you that those, those things are true. They're out there. Toxic, toxic masculinity is out there. Misogyny is out there. The, the with, you know, with, withholding women from, from engaging all that they can be, that happens in the patriarchy. But at the same time, much of it has the undercurrents of misandry, which is the hatred of men. And two wrongs never make a right. And two wrongs never bring us closer. And two wrongs never cause honor to happen. And in the house of God, that should never be. We love and honor both sexes for the purpose of the kingdom being advanced and expressed. And if there's any place in the world where they should come in and see what honor looks like and what love looks like, it should be here. So, so ladies, guard your hearts from, the, from what's, on, what's going on in the world in misandry because it will rob you of a healthy marriage. Men, guard your hearts from misogyny because it will rob you of healthy marriage and healthy relationships. Women, it will cause you to raise sons who don't know what it is to be a man. Not, I'm not talking about masculine. I'm talking about a man. And men, it will cause your daughters not to know how to be strong and powerful women. Two wrongs never make a right. Guard your hearts because it's fashionable. <laughs> it's fashionable to let misandry masquerade as feminism. And it's wrong. All right, love you. It's never about rulership, it's always about partnership. All right. Life. Life, quickly, life. Men is Jesus who he says he is. Now that's the question you got to wrestle with. Is Jesus who he says is? Because the follow-up to that, is it okay if we turn the lights up just a little bit more? It just feels a little dim out there. The, the follow-up to that is this. Then are you doing what he said to do? Brothers, this is, this is important. Men, this, fathers, this is important. If Jesus is who he says he is, then the next question, and it's, appropriate it's relevant it's not controlling it's not it, it, it's it's not uh, religious 
It's, it's the next, do your best, honey, I know. The next question is, is, is real. Then are you doing what he said to do? If he is king of kings and lord of lords, if you believe he is who he says he is, men, this is important because far too often we have mental assent towards who he says he is, but we don't have actual boots on the ground accomplishing what he said to do in our lives. And we're okay with minor compromises because they fit into our grid of what we want our lives to look like. Now, I've got really good news. God isn't interested. The Father isn't interested in you being miserable, men. He's not interested in that. The Father wants you to experience life and life abundantly. He sent his son with the purpose, the express purpose. Do your best. (laughs) I love that you're having such a hard time not laughing. But his purpose and desire is for you to experience life and life abundantly. The Father isn't going to rob you. When you start to relinquish to his ways, when you relinquish your life to his ways, friends, the Father will give you life and life abundantly. Nothing that you could pursue, nothing that you could accomplish, nothing that you could build with your own two hands will compare to the life you get when you relinquish your life to the Lordship of Jesus. Nothing. And men, we get duped here. Because sometimes we, we, we look at it out of fear of looking stupid. What we do is we relinquish the Lordship of Christ over our lives because we want to be in charge. We think that that's our role to be in charge, and our role is to follow. We're sons. We follow. We follow. I want you to look at this scripture with me real quick. See, there's a lie that, well, okay, Jesus may be who he says he is, and I believe that, but there's no way that I'm able to do what he says to do. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Now, we've talked about it at length, but that's the call to your seat. That's called to be in union with Christ. The call into his glory and excellence. He actually grants us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who's called us to his own glory of excellence, by which he has granted us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers in the divine nature. So in other words, Jesus has done all that you need to be able to follow him with all of your might. The good news is, is you don't have to do this on your own strength. You can lean into the strength of Christ. I think the best day of my life was the day that I realized that I wasn't strong enough, but that I was good enough through Christ. And a lot of times we equate, our, our, we equate how good we are by how strong we are. But when I came to realize that my good, but Jesus made me good. Jesus put me back together even though I, I didn't realize I was a part. And when he put me back together, then he became strong in me. And I didn't have to do it on my own. Everything is there. Men, everything is there. Everything is there for you. Can you say that to me? Everything. Jesus gives me everything. Now, that was great that we all participated, but I didn't hear the boys. Jesus gives me everything. Better, better, much better. If I can stand in this getup, you can talk back. (laughs) See, because we can say, I'm just, I'm not very good at this. I'm not very good at doing everything that Jesus says. And the good news is, is you don't have to be, you don't have to be good at it. He made you good. He'll give you strength. He'll do it through you and for you and with you. He wants you to make it men. Second thing, Legacy. 
Charles uh, Spurgeon wrote this. He said this, a good character is the best tombstone. Those who love you and were helped by you will remember you. So carve your name on hearts, not on marble. There is nothing that you can build that will have more lasting effect than people. There is no influence that you can have in business, in career, in politics, in society. There's no influence that you can have or build on your own that will have more impact than your influence on people. Who you build is far more important than what you build. Who you build is much more important than what you build. Each of you have the capacity not just to be spiritual fathers and fathers in your own families, but over our family. Remember Mother's Day, I talked about the importance of a three-generational church where grandfathers, fathers, and sons were all walking together. You know, my dad always used to tell, tell the riddle. He, he, he would say, you know, two fathers and two sons were walking along, but there was only three people. How is this so? And I remember stumbling over it and not being able to figure it out. And then dad would say, because there was a granddad. And then his son, who was a dad. And then his son. And so the middle one was a dad and a son at the same time. And then he said this. Landon, someday it'll come where you're going to need to be a dad and a son at the same time. It'll happen. And here's my invitation to you. You'll always be a son. Men, if you lose grasp of your sonship, you'll have a hard time walking in fatherhood. It's vital that we, that we make... Now, well, maybe your dad isn't here. I've got such great news. He, the Bible says, is a father to the fatherless. He is a good father. And he loves you so much. And I've shared this in the past, but it bears repeating for those of you who are maybe new to a journey with us. But in the prodigal son story, when the father ran to the boy, the cultural implications were is that the boy was about to be rejected. Remember the prodigal son? All of you give it, Chris? The, the, the cultural implication is that the son was going to be rejected by the community and shamed by the community. So the father ran and got to his boy before the community could get there to shame him. That is your heavenly father. That's his love for you. He loves you and he's for you. And he calls you to be a son and a father at the same time. Whether it's in the context of the natural way of things, whether it's in the context of your natural family or of your spiritual family, you're called to be sons first and fathers. And you can do it. And, and look at how Paul, Paul wrote this. He said, you know, for you've had countless guides or teachers in Christ, but you don't have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then to be imitators of me. It's interesting, Paul uses different words there. He says, he says you've had not many fathers or paters. That was the Greek word, pater. And then he, which, which was the natural word for father, is the normal word, you know, it means father. But then he describes himself as a father by using the word geneo, which means to cause into being or to begat. And so, because you see, here's the thing. Anybody can be a father, but not everybody can be a dad. Not everybody can be the guy who is there because he begat you, because he formed you, because he caused you. And Paul said, I caused you. I, through the gospel, I caused you into being. And then he says this, so imitate me. My revelation of the gospel is something that you can imitate. So you might be saying to me this morning, well, Landon, how do I be a, a son and a father at the same time? What, what, what does it mean? Well, it means that you've actually living a life that can be imitated. 
and that those who you've caused, your children, and the spiritual family around you can imitate you. I love when my kids ask me to um, come with them uh, to purchase something or to, you know, I, I, I love that. Because it tells me that they're, they're interested in my opinion and they want me to walk with them and they, and they want me to engage it. And I, and I love that and I honor that. But what's even better is when they say to me, and they have, I figured that this would be probably what you would think. It's that they can imitate me without me being there. That's a life that can be imitated. Basically, you've lived it out in front of them. So what does that mean, men? That you're actually, faith, your faith isn't hidden. That it's lived out. That your journey is lived out. That the conversations are happening with your, with your family, with your spiritual family. That you're walking for you. Men, I'm calling, I'm, I'm calling you up. Not because you're not already at a good altitude, but I believe that what God has for us is going to take us to a whole other layer of understanding of what it is to be fathers. Because there's a nation that needs to be discipled. And it needs fa- it's fatherless. The stats are astounding of how, fatherless, how fatherlessness affects a nation. And here we have all that's needed to to present the divine nature to the world. It's exciting. And I mean, let me just, there's a hint what Paul means by this a little earlier. I'll just read it for you. It's there, but it's in 1 Corinthians 4, 4, uh, 11 to 14. To present... um, uh, we are to present to this present hour. Sorry, we hunger and thirst. We're poorly dressed and buffeted and homeless, and we labor working with our hands. Listen, watch what he says here. When we're reviled, we bless. When we're persecuted, we endure. When we sla- when we're slandered, we entreat. We become and still are like the scum of the world who refuse all things. I don't write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children, because you've had countless guides but not many fathers. But I was a father in the gospel. So you see how I'm doing it? You go do the same. Let me tell you what. The world needs the presentation of a gospel that can be imitated, not simply preached. And then lastly, a fashion sense. Nailed it. You know, one time, Kath, one time I came into the, one time Kath came into the service and she's like, Landy, did you get dressed in the dark this morning? And I was like, yeah, nailed it. And she was like, no. <laughs> what, are you, what, what, what are you wearing? Listen, young people, there will come a point in your lives where you will recognize that sandals with socks is way more comfortable. (laughs) There'll come a point where sweatpants and a suit jacket just make sense. We didn't say it was right. We said it made sense. Guys, when it comes to your fashion sense... You have to put off the old self and put on the new. It's a lengthy scripture. I've got a portion of it up here. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these two you once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Don't lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there's no Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, 
bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts towards God. And wherever, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The fashion sense of the man of God is that he's put off the old and he's put on the new. Men, what you tolerate becomes what your children practice. What you tolerate in your walk with God, what you tolerate in your life, in your business, in your language, become what your children practice. Don't be deceived. God isn't mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. If he reaps to the flesh, he'll sow destruction. If he reaps to the spirit, he'll sow life. The most important thing that I can tell you today, boys, is this. As a father over this house, put off the old self. Put on the new self. Well, I don't think I can do that. Yes, you can, because through his spirit, he's given you all that you need to walk out this outrageous divine lifestyle. Listen. To hold on to the old ways. is to make them the foundation for your kids' new ways. It's a sobering thought. You don't want your, listen, I don't, this is important. You don't want your kids to just make it to heaven. You want them to actually live out heaven here on earth. And any man of God worth their salt, any father worth their salt, will want their kids to outpace them, to to outdo them. You want your ceiling to be their floor. Don't lower the ceiling. But go for it. That doesn't mean that you have to become super holy dad in the sense of requiring, you know, an ungodly yoke of religiosity over your children, but rather modeling for them a life filled with obedience, filled with power, filled with joy, filled with the filled with the wondrous promises of what it looks like to wear the new self. To remind them who they really are as you allow the Father to continue to remind you who you really are. So how do we do this? Well, determine to bring your best self to your relationships. Determine to bring your best self to your family. I didn't say perfect. I said best. You're not going to do it perfectly. But determine to bring your best self. And when you miss the mark, repent for it. If you hurt your kids, repent for it. Look for every opportunity to tell them that you love them. This generation is better than that, in that than other generations in the past. Other generations in the past looked at declaring love for your children as a sign of weakness or turning them into being weak. But that got broken in many of the younger boomers and in the Gen X generation and now in the millennials as parents. I just, I, 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 I love watching the way you parent where your kids just know what it is to, to experience dad's love and dad's embrace and dad celebrating over them. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you haven't, you, that, wasn't your, that wasn't what you received as a, as a young son. Um, I've got good news for you. There's fathers here who can show you what that looks like. 
as I look up across the room at Jack, at Al, at, at different ones, at Rick, and different ones who, who walked this way, at, at, at Tim. And I see all of these men and, women, and men of God who, who know how to, how to father. I, look, I, I see Brian Paul back there. I, I see all these different, you know, these precious fathers who know how to tell you that you're loved. Seek them out. Seek them out. Don't be, men don't let victimization drive the bus. Through Christ, you're victorious. So it's settled. You've won. So you've won over whatever wounding you may have faced as a kid. You've won. Through Christ, you've won. So seek out wholeness. Go talk. I remember, John, years back, you, you said, you know, you said to me when, when dad was still around, you, you said, gosh, I don't really have. Uh, you know, like, I just love the relationship you have with your dad. Would you be okay with sharing him a little bit? I was like, did you see how big he is? There's plenty. <laughs> Take a piece, none of us will miss. But find them, love them. Myron, Rod, these different, Ed Kraska, these different ones who know how to, how to love. And it doesn't matter. Maybe you're here and you're like, as a, you're a senior and you're just like, I, I just, you know, I came from that stage where, where my Go to them anyways. They're spiritual fathers. The, the, the principles of the kingdom are ageless. As a result, any age, is ava- any age is able to access any principle at any time. Don't miss out. Don't miss out on the love of fathers. So, I want to go back to the first passage. And I'm going to read a little bit further. Because the bottom line is, how do you do this? Well, you determine to bring your best self. Well, how do I do that, Landy? How do I do that? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Um, let me read for you. I'm reading from 2 Peter 1, 3 to 10. If you have your Bibles, open your phones, turn to your Bibles. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us into his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers in the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that's in the world because of its sinful desire. Verse 5, For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, Godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he's blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers... Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. Amen. You know, there's a saying in different circles, failure is not an option. And it's put upon the individual to perform to a level where failure is not an option. You'll be rejected or you'll die or, you know, In the kingdom, failure is not an option. That's because Jesus is one at all. In him, you will never fail. Listen, men, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm honored to walk in suit socks and sandals amongst you. I feel for me, this is sort of a graduating moment, to be honest. Graduated to another level of coolness as a dad. And I'm not ashamed, even though my children are. (laughs) But there is something that is so freeing when you come to Christ and are set free of the confines of the fashion sense of the world and get to live free, so free that they call you free indeed. 
It's an amazing thing to feel so confident in that you're loved that you don't care what anybody else thinks you look like. It's a freeing thing to be so secure in your acceptance that you're not concerned about other people accepting you, but more concerned with accepting others. It's a wonderful place to be. And let's face it, embarrassing your kids is the highest calling of any father. <laughs> you, know why scuba di- you know why scuba divers fall backwards into the water? Because if they fell forwards, they'd fall into the boat. You know why you can't hear a pterodactyl going to the bathroom? Because the pee is silent. (laughs) You're welcome. Because we're ending, I was told not to share this one. Okay, I'm going to share it, but none of you are allowed to get offended. But my kids asked why supper was bland and cold. And I said, it's because mom prepared it with all her heart and soul. (laughs) (laughs) If that offended you, well, I'm sorry. (laughs) But the rest of us really laughed. Men, would you stand up for a second? Men, stand up. If you're of father-aged men, stand up. Stretch your hands towards these guys. Stretch your hands towards them. Ladies, come on. Brothers, just be in an attitude of receiving. I bless you. I bless you with the Father's blessing. I speak life over you. I speak peace over you, grace over you, strength over you, wisdom over you. I speak authority in the spirit, not the kind of authority that rules over, but the authority that lifts up. I speak grace, wisdom. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you. I bless you going in. I bless you coming out. I bless the work of your hands. I bless the ideas in your mind. I bless the vision on your heart. I bless you in Jesus' name. I honor you because you're men in a very hard time to be men. I bless your businesses. I bless your business ventures. I bless the places where you work. I pray the places that you work would be blessed by your presence. I pray favor and blessing over everything you touch. And I ask that the kingdom of heaven would manifest at every turn. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the men of this house. I thank you for the heart of fathers in this house. I thank you, Lord, that you're moving us from glory to glory as men, as fathers. Now we're going to see your kingdom advance in and through our lives. That our children will not be lost. And that our children will know your goodness. And that our children will know how to walk as a true child of God because they're going to be able to imitate me. Lord, it's not an arrogant statement. It's a statement of truth. I declare your life a life worth imitation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.